like what have kids taught you about you? Um, that I need to work on patience. They want your attention and you just got to have a lot of patience because at some point they're, they're, they're definitely not going to be there. And they're not going to be as interested in you as they are. Is that why you're making a beer for patients? <laughs> <laughs> definitely part of the reasons. What's it going to be called right now? Uh, gratis. What's that? Like, thank you of some sort? Uh, it's Latin. Oh, Latin. That's yeah. so funny. The name of my wine is Somnium, which is a Latin word, which means dream. Really? Look at us being all multicultural and ancient in our languages. I feel like that's a sign I'm on the right track. Wow. I, yeah, me too. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Pretty Intense Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. You tuning in helps me be able to keep doing this because I truly love talking to people and I love sharing all these experiences with you guys. So thanks. Today is Jay Cutler. And I was so stoked to get Jay Cutler. He was a former Chicago Bears quarterback. He's lived quite the life. Like afterwards, he was on a reality show, started his own podcast now. So when his career was over, it wasn't over, over for him. Took a little siesta for a year, like most of us athletes do when we're done with our sport. But I'm excited for you to hear this interview. It takes some twists and turns that I just totally didn't expect to happen. But, you know, we kicked off by talking about his kids, talking about football, and then it got into some crazy fun stuff about aliens and reality and um, moon landings and then we went into health and things that he's tried and things that he might want to try a lot of fun stuff in this interview so i think you'll come away feeling like jay is a pretty interesting guy i sure do if you like what you hear today and you like any of these podcasts, please hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. This shows that the show is doing its thing and that you're interested. You know, you have children, three children. I do have children, nine, seven, and six, third grade, uh, second grade kindergarten. So uh, they're a handful then? It's, it's getting easier. It's getting better. Like the boys, it just depends. If the boys kind of team up, and they do their own thing. Then Sailor's a little girl. Like, I can play with her. If Jackson teams up with Sailor, then, I mean, all hell breaks loose. There's no telling what they're going to get into. Which one's the wildest? Jackson, the middle, by far. He's second grade, seven years old, and he's, uh, he's wide open. He's all over the place. What's your daughter like? Sometimes she can be absolutely just hate me. Like, this morning she came down. Super sweet, walked over, she let me pick her up, held her for, you know, like 30 seconds. Other days, like, she'll come down right for school and just look at me and be like, ah, and just walk away. Some days, like, she'll cut up on the couch and watch TV. Other days, she's like, get away from me, don't touch me. Some days, she's like, I can brush her hair. Other days, other weeks, like, she'll be like, don't, you can't touch my hair for a week. Can you braid, though? I can braid hair. Yes. <laughs> I can braid hair. Um, she, I mean, it's, I mean, what is she? Six years old. She's probably only let me do it twice in her entire life. Oh yeah. So, so she's, she goes hot and cold on you. Oh dad. Very, very hot and cold. I used to be like the only guy that she would ever want to be around, but she's getting better now. I mean, even, my brother-in-law, like, even, I mean, there's people like she just did not, like some of my best friends, like she would not, she wouldn't even say hi to them, much less look at them, but she's gotten better. I mean, kinder, kindergarten's been good for her. Mm, yeah. Sometimes that socialization, my sister has three girls mm -hmm. and uh, the middle one, um, they're like, what are they now? Seven, five and two. And um, the middle one had a hard time with school, going to school, didn't yeah. like it cried and now she's okay like sometimes school you know can really help help a kid out it is. So and then there's other stuff like you learn a bunch of really really ridiculous stuff as the years goes on but socializing is important yeah it is important i mean it's been good for so so wanted to go to school um she loves it uh but i mean i think just being around other guys, kids her age, boys her age has, has kind of helped her out a lot. But like she loves going to school. Jackson, I mean, he only goes to school just because he wants to socialize. Like he's he's the kid that like gets in trouble at lunch because he's like walking around to every single table. That's fun. Like that, that's the only problems that we have with with that one. He's he 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 treats school as kind of a as basically every class is recess and let's just have fun and just hang out and talk. 
<laughs> a social butterfly. Mm -hmm. Um, what's uh like being a single dad, man? That must be must yeah. be it's I'm guessing you're a single dad right now. I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. It's uh it's difficult. Um, you know, I, I think what I've learned is you have to be, you have to be very organized and, 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 and I have help, you know, I've got some people that, um, help me out a lot and do some things for me. Uh, but you have to be really, really organized or, you know, you just can't do it because, you know, you have to make lunch, you have to make dinner, you have to, you know, get them ready. You've got to, you know, on Wednesdays, we've got gymnastics and we have basketball. So, um, you know, you kind of have to plan your week out because we're seven on seven off. So. That's mm. seven, that seven days of on is, 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 is pretty, pretty intense. What's your, like your plate? What does it have on it? It's got taking care of the kids. And then what else? Like, what are your main projects? Podcast. And the podcast, which I know you have. Yeah, obviously the podcast. And then um, working with some guys here in town with uh, out, like outsider.com. And then there's an on three.com company. Um, and then we're, I think we're kind of, we're in the, early stages of develop, uh, developing a beer that we kind of want to push out here in Nashville. So some, some fun stuff, but I mean, nothing that, nothing that takes up too much time. So that those seven days I have the kids that I can't be there and, you know, kind of work around their schedule. So like when they're at school, like I'll make breakfast, make their lunches and then, you know, take them to school. And then I'm able to come in here to the office, maybe do rip off a couple podcasts, work on some stuff for the beer, work on some stuff for some of this other, other things I want to do. Um, mm -hmm. And then be back home by the time the bus gets there and, you know, have dinner made and, and be able to kind of be there, help with homework and, and then get them to sleep. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? <sighs> Not sure yet. I'm smarter than a third grader. So that's, <laughs> that's good enough right now. But Camden, Camden, he's, he's our oldest and he's, he's, pretty smart um you know he's do you know about like the new math situation i would probably struggle with third grade math okay probably fifth grade i mean i just did not like math it wasn't my thing numbers i see numbers in my brain just like it's like some sort of short circuiting happens and i just does not compute well the how they're doing it now is like you literally need like a whole sheet of paper for like one problem like they're there it's all graphed out and it's it's difficult it's difficult. So I'm learning. I'm also learning how to multiply with the new math along with my third grader. So that's Good fine. Job. Yeah. Does that help you in your life? Not one bit at all. I just think there's so much stuff that doesn't get used. 95% of it yeah. at best. What should they be learning? I don't know. I, mean, I think if you look at school, I think it's basically like how to socialize and be around people. I, I mean, that's, that's a lot of it. Like, you know, unless you're going to be a lawyer or a know, mathematician or a doctor, like higher education isn't really probably necessary. And then, you know, you're looking at school debt and, you know, all that stuff. You know, we allow an 18 year old to take out a hundred thousand dollar loan for college, but you know, they can't get a house when they're done. So it's, it's, it's all kind of backwards. I'm not, I don't know the answer. So I feel like, and I don't have kids, um, but I feel like like parents relationships and children kind of are the most triggering relationships and yeah. that such an area for growth is being able to deal with those and like recognize what comes out. So what, like, what have kids taught you about you? Um, that I need to work on patience. They want your attention and you just got to have a lot of patience because at some point they're, they're, they're definitely not going to be there. They're not going to be as interested in you as they are. Is that why you're making a beer for patience? <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Um, definitely part of the reasons there, uh, I think like with the salsa world and stuff right now, like beer is just kind of getting the, the shaft here. So I, I think there's a, there's a market here for, like a, a, a beer that's a little bit above Bud Light, a little bit above Miller Light, but it's not a craft beer. If Tell me sense. more about it. I had, I had a summer in Chicago where I drank a shitload of Goose Island. And then yeah. I was like, that was too much Belgian beer for me. I yeah. should stick with wine because I do think you gain a little more weight with beer, or at least I did that summer. Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. What kind of beer is it? 
so it's going to be like American, it's an Amer American lager, but um, it's, there's this German type of uh, brewing process. It only uses four ingredients. So it's not going to be as watered down like a, a Bud Light or a Miller Light, but we're, we don't want to get into the heavy IPA or Belgian craft, craft heavy beer. So it's a, it's a drinkable beer. You can have it um, at a tailgate. You can have it on a boat. You can have it in the middle of winter. You can drink it with food. Um, so we're just kind of working on it. What's it going to be called right now? Uh, gratis. Gratis. What's that? Like, thank you of some sort Wait, in German? Uh, it's Latin. Oh, Latin. That's yeah. so funny. The name of my wine is Somnium, which is a Latin word, which means dream. Really? Look at us being all multicultural and ancient in our languages. Look, like that's a sign. I'm on the right track. Wow. I, yeah, me too. So speaking of football, um, dude, what a weekend of football. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Some of the best games I've seen in years. Yeah. I mean, that game, I mean, the Kansas City game uh, was unreal. I mean, my dad was texting me. He's like, best game I've ever seen. It might, like, it, it's going to go down as one of the top 10 games of all time, without a doubt. I mean, if that was a, if that was a division, uh, AFC championship game, like, it, it would be top five. Um, but those dudes can flat out play. Oh, I mean, how old's Josh Allen? This is like his third year, maybe fourth year. I mean, the new guard is coming. Joe Burrow, Josh, Josh Allen, like the new Patrick, um, Herbert. Yeah. You know, I mean, some of these other rookies might pop up. I mean, there's some dudes that can just play football. I mean, there's no defense, and I, I'm not sure. But, but with Patrick and, and Josh, like, they move around so well. That, I mean, Josh is like his own running. He's like a running back as well. He's a monster. He's huge. So you either run the ball with him or you play zone and then he's going to throw the ball. But if you blitz him and you don't get home, he's just going to make bigger plays. And Patrick's the same. Um, and they got really good coaches. I feel like, you know, those, they got, they got great head coaches. They've got good uh, offensive coordinators. They've got talent. I think they've done a good job of getting talent around Josh over the years. If they get him one more stud, um, they're going to be right there. In racing, there's kind of like a the question of car or driver. Yeah. So um, what's the, in, in sort of football language, what's the difference between like team and coach? How big of a role, like if you, if you have a great team and a shitty coach versus a great coach and an average team, I mean, because yeah. I don't feel like, you know, there's nobody in the NFL that's, like, that's anything other than average at the worst. Yeah, true. Sure. Kind of like racing. It's not like you have some terrible driver with a, like everybody can do it. So we're working with like average to great. So what's yeah. more important? Do you think coach or do you think the team? You know, for me as a quarterback, like the offensive coordinator was vital to me. I thought like, you know, that's calling plays to me is like an art form. Like, you know, you've got to get in the flow. You've got to kind of guess what they're going to play. Um, you know, you can't just look at your sheet and be like, all right, let's just go with this, this, and this and see what happens. Like there's a, there's a, there's a delicacy there. That, that, like you know, a finesse. So yeah. is it the offensive coordinator that's calling more of the calls than the coach? Is oh, he right. telling the coach what to, what to run? No, the, like most teams head coach, very few teams head coach actually call the plays. You know, okay. Kyle Shanahan does, McVay does. Reed, you know, Reed does for KC that just goes through a different guy. Um, but most head coaches have a defensive coordinator and an offensive coordinator that will call the plays separately. And the head coach will hear him, but he doesn't have any say in, in what's being called. So like that, for me, that offensive coordinator was, I mean, he made or break me and the team. So, you know, if he called, if he calls, you know, a shitty play, then, you know, you just, Maybe, maybe sometimes you can get out of it. Sometimes you have to run it and you just, you have to just take the loss. So, but with that being said, I'm sure it's like this in, in race car driving. Like there's, so I mean, I guess that would be like, that would be the car for you. Yeah. So like there's probably only, like there's probably, there's only a handful of amazing offensive coordinators in the NFL. Which yeah, I'm exactly. guessing race car driving, there's probably only a handful of, you know, amazing cars out there. 
Yeah. 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 I could probably interject and add, like we could probably add a third element perhaps of like crew chief or something like that, but, but you know, so, okay. So that would be, that would be like your GM and yeah. like he would be the one that drafting the players and like he's your, like your third element. Like if he sucks too, you're not going to get any good players. So how far out is a GM thinking? Like does a GM go into the draft every year and think this year or are they almost always playing the long-term chess game? They, they do both. They have to do both. And, and they have to do like free agents and the current team. So you know, most of the time, like you're going to have, there, there's going to be a tryout like every Monday or Tuesday of new guys that they kind of are just bringing in and they'll work them out. You know, there's a practice squad guys that will kind of trade in and out. There, there's the bottom, like bottom 5% of the roster, bottom 3% of the roster is kind of always evolving. Oh, what a shitty position to be in to be honest. I mean, like where you live and I feel bad for some you know, as you get older, like you feel bad for those guys. Like you get you get a kid in and you know, he's 25, he's married, and like this is like his ninth team. He's you know, busting his butt to make the team, but it's just like it's a it's a brutal business. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, what about within the team as far as like What's the most important within the team from your perspective? You've got quarterback, wide receivers, like running backs, tight end, Depends special like teams, defense. Yeah, like what, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the rank of like if you're to build your team, you start with and go down? Quarterback. You know, I mean, if you look at, you know, the four teams in, like they got, they got dudes that can, that, that can play football. Um, and consistently, like over time, like you have to have a quarterback that can play. I think after that, if you if you have your quarterback, um, you got to get your offensive line. Yeah, you know you've got to you got to be able to block. You've got to be able to protect these guys. I mean, these guys, every, all these guys are getting a little bit more um, mobile. They can move around. Like the days of you know a, a Dan Marino or you know even a, a Joe Montana or, or a Tom Brady of just sitting in the pocket. Yeah. You know, being almost statue-like, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's not happening anymore. It's going away. So that helps. Is that because out. of the defense? Is that because the defenses are evolving? Well, I think it's because of high school and college. Huh. They're running different systems. You know, they're, they're that 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 game has changed. So these guys are a lot more athletic than they used to be. Damn. So then I think after that, you got to. I think a lot of the NFL starts up front, D line and O line is is if you got if you can rush the passer and protect the or protect the passer, like you're gonna be you're gonna be right there. You need like one at every level on defense. So you need a defensive lineman, you need a, a badass linebacker, and then maybe a corner or a safety. And then you yeah. can kind of fill in your gaps. Do you like watching football now that you're done? You know, I didn't like the first year I was out. I, I was like, ah, I, don't, I mean, I just wasn't interested in it. And I, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do when I was done either. So I took a break, didn't watch it. And then as the boys got a little bit older, now they're just flat out obsessed. So, oh, okay. Like, well, who are their teams? <sighs> it, <laughs> Tell me it's the Bears. That would be hilarious. It, um, Cam likes the Bears. I mean, the pro- and that's another problem with, I think, t- today's kids is, you know, we have direct TV, so like we have that Sunday ticket package. So like we all, play all the games. Yeah. They're they're on the internet. They know every player. And so like he was a San Diego Chargers fan because he loved Herbert. And then last night, like he's screaming about KC, loves Patrick Mahomes. I'm like, bro, like you're turning into a band like a fan. Like this is I mean, he busted in the room at six o'clock. He was like, "You can you six o'clock this morning?" He's like, "Can you believe that game?" He goes, "Me and Jackson just watched the highlights at the end," and I was like, "I know it was a good one." I go, "So you a KC fan?" He goes, "Love Patrick." Love <laughs> so I'm like, "You're I don't know how I feel about it, but I mean, I'm glad he enjoys it, but it's still, you know, whenever whenever I was growing up, I mean, I grew up in Southern Indiana, and you know, all we had was the Bears games." Like that was your one game that you got to watch. And then, you know, I think that you got Monday night game and stuff, but like you didn't have the opportunity to watch nine games in one day. I, I didn't know that about you. So were you stoked to play for the bears? Um, yeah, I was excited. I was excited. Um, Cause I grew up in Southern Indiana and then all my family's from Northern Indiana. 
like uh, mm. Valparaiso, Chester, yeah. it's right outside of Gary. So, Basically Chicago. Let's just call it Chicago. Exactly. So they were, everyone was excited. You know, we had a bunch of people at every game. So it, it was fun. Mm. So you didn't know what the hell you were going to do when you retired. What did you, like, what were your interests? I'm guessing you always liked hunting, right? Yeah, I always liked hunting, um, you know, but like, it's like, what, are we, like, what am I going to do with that? Like do a, a hunting show or do, I mean, I didn't know. I mean, it, yeah, there's nothing really. Dude, my NASCAR days when I would go into the hauler yeah. and uh, the TV would be on and uh -huh. GAC would be on. Uh -huh. Great American oh. country. Oh, but then yeah. We had, of course, some hunting shows in there too. Oh, and I yeah. was just like, wow, this is, this is the most boring thing I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, so I did, I, I did a ton of hunting just because like I had to fall off. Like that was the first, like when I first got out, I was like, you know, I just want to do nothing this fall because I've been, you know, doing two -a days in August since I've been like five. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then after that, you know, we were, I was doing the, the reality show with, uh, Kristen, um, for E. So we did that for a year and a half, maybe. And then I was just like, something's going to happen. Like it's, like, there's no rush. Like I was 35 years old, 36 years old. So, so I was going to ask like why you're doing a podcast, but it sounds like the answer is you're bored. It, I was, yeah. I mean, I was bored, but I mean, I, I, either, I have enjoyed, I've enjoyed it. Like talking to people. And uh, they're like, well, let's just concentrate on football. And I was like, I'll do a couple of football guests, but then I'm going off the rails here. Like, I, this is the only way I want to do this. Like, just talk to interesting people that, you know, I hear about that I, I'm interested in and things that I'm interested in. And like, let's learn some stuff and let's have some fun with it. So I've, I've definitely enjoyed that part of it for sure. Yeah, I have the same. I mean, my racing podcast with those drivers, they do really well. Yeah. People sure. love that stuff, I'm but sure. that's not my driving force or, or main interest. So what kind of like, when you start getting guests, like what's the sort of brackets, you know, like I love science and yeah. spirituality, you know, that kind of stuff. So what were your first kind of get guests? I mean, I had a list of like 200 people and it was, it was so, it was so bizarre. It was all over the place. So, so like, we're just kind of trying to pick through it and see who we can get. Like, you know, I had a guy on that, um, he, he loves big, Bigfoots. Like he's, he's got a Bigfoot museum in California. So like he came on and talked, you know, I think we've got an alien, some alien people coming on in, in, in a month or so. So aliens. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go. You know, I, you know, I, me I messed up cause I played, uh, I played golf with uh, Donald Trump going into it. I was like, I, you need to ask the former president like about aliens. Is there anything you can tell? And we got, I just forgot, forgot to ask him. And so like afterwards, I was like, I was like my biggest regret. I did not ask <laughs> one thing about aliens. Jay's lifelong biggest regret is not uh, asking Donald Trump, former president about aliens. Well, what would you want to know? Like, what would, what would you be really, what are you curious about that you think, man, I, somebody's got to know this. Well, I'd be like, Hey, like, listen, I get that this, a lot of this stuff is top secret and everything, Area 15, whatever it is. Is there anything that you can tell me? Anything? Are aliens, are, you know, do we, what do we know about aliens that, you know, everyone else, you know, have we, do we have any alien spacecrafts in our possession somewhere? You know, did we really go to the moon? You know, all kinds of stuff. Like, I did a poll on anything. that. Huh? I, I did a poll on that. Did we go to the moon? And the results were 70% said we did and 30% said we didn't. And I was actually like, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning like, I don't think we did, but do you think we you did? Don't, you don't think we did? No. I don't know, man. I mean, it, I mean, how, what year was that? I don't know. I wasn't born. Wasn't 60s, 50s, 60s. I, I mean, mean, it's... it's to say we had that technology and then we just lost it is makes makes no sense. And it just seems like we're just now kind of figuring out how to fly spacecrafts and uh, with SpaceX and everything. Like just they're just now kind of hammering this down. But in 1960, we were able to just uh, hop up there and get out and walk around. Also make a phone call from the moon. <laughs> my, I phone mean, my phone barely works now. 
I mean, I can be in my, you know, condo downtown Chicago at the top of the building in the middle of it all. And I'm like, I, it doesn't work. What's the problem here? But yet the moon, no problem. Full bars. True. I mean, there's a whole lot of reasons why maybe not. I mean, look at that thing that landed on the moon. Does that look like it should get through the Van Allen belt? Does that look like I would want, you'd want to be in space in that thing? No, none of those things look like that. Um, so, I mean, do you think there's aliens? Definitely. Gotta be, right? Now, the question is, I mean, there's just no way. It seems like the most arrogant thing in the world to think that we are the only ones. Yeah. I just saw a clip from, it was like some old clip um, of Elon Musk and uh, on Instagram. And it was basically talking about how, you know, planet solar, you know, the universe has been around for 13 and 0.8 billion years, Earth for four and a half billion years. Yeah. And in a half a million years, the sun will get so big that it will kind of evaporate the oceans and life won't be sustainable. And so how many planets are there that have had life that just go extinct because they don't get off the planet and they don't figure out another way? And he's like, I think many. I don't know. I just recently read this book. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like six numbers or seven numbers and it basically talks about like the big bang theory mm. like there's like these six numbers that are so astronomically long that they all had to coincide at exactly the right time for the big bang theory to happen and for us to create life so like these are like you know physicists and you know quantum physics like some of the top minds in the world mm -hmm. who who typically, you know, don't believe in God, don't believe, you know, they believe in Big big Bang Theory. Like, that's how they, they have to see, you know, it mapped out. It worked out numbers-wise. Yeah. And these guys are saying that there's – the numbers are so great, it couldn't have happened. I've seen that many times. I, I'm friends with uh, um, a scientist named Nassim Hermine, and he's brilliant. And the way that he talks about um, the probability of humans even being here, just and how everything happened the way it did and that we exist, it's just, it's not, there's not, it's essentially not a chance. So what are we? Yeah. What, what's happening? Yeah. I don't know. So have you ever thought about the fact that there are like aliens already here? Inner earth theory? They're already on earth? here maybe they shape shift maybe they're kind of like look humanish you know those people that kind of look like aliens where are you on reincarnation um for i think for sure i think it's the only thing that explains old soul new soul like you just meet people and you can meet a five-year-old and be like wow you're yeah. like deep yeah. how'd this happen or mature and then you can meet a 45 year old and, be, and think, hmm, you're just a young soul, aren't you? <laughs> just like to play, don't you? You know, I mean, that's, and I also think that um, I believe in like the Akashic Records. Have you ever, have you ever had your Akashic Records read? What's that? So the Akashic Records is, um, it's basically like the field of energy, the field, uh, the field beyond us, and mm. that everything is connected and that in other dimensions that all timelines exist simultaneously and that time and space don't exist. So there's sort of like a frequency we can achieve where we can access these records. And it's basically just the history of everything. It's everything that's ever happened and probabilities of what could happen. And so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of fascinating. So, yeah, I don't know. Do you believe in reincarnation, past lives? You know, it makes a lot of sense to me. And I read the, I read another book and a guy, um, so he, he was hypnotizing one of his patients and she just started, I mean, vividly started talking about this, this past life. And, you know, he's, you know, he got her out of it and talked to her about it. And he was like, Hey, do you mind if I start recording this? And she's like, no problem. And he, he's written like five books off after, after the podcast, I'll, I'll figure it out. Um, but that's his, that's his thing. He hypnotizes people and they go back and they talk about all the, and you know, someone might have um, like neck pain 
and they'll be like, you know, that you you were you were killed, and you know they stabbed you in the neck or something like your back or your knee. Um, and then he basically got so involved with it. He was talking to like to the masters and they were telling him that, you know, you have to, you have to learn something in this life for you to kind of keep graduating and going forward. And you're eventually going to achieve this, you know, this level where you're, you know, you don't go back to earth, but you're in this, in this different universe and, and yeah. spend the time. Have you ever heard of Dolores Cannon? No. Okay. You should definitely look up Dolores Cannon on YouTube and watch her videos. She's an old, old lady in these videos. She's passed since she's, she was in her eighties in these videos. She might've died 10 years ago or so. And she did hypnotherapy. And when she, she would go deep into the subconscious and she thought what she was going to get was she thought she was going to get past lives a lot of times, sure. but what she ended up getting was people going to other solar systems and planets and all kinds of crazy stuff. She has tons of books called Convoluted Universe, The, mm -hmm. the Three Waves of Volunteers. I was just having a conversation this weekend with um, some girls about uh, the, the waves of volunteers. Have you heard about the three waves of volunteers? No. It's um, like the original waves of volunteers that came and signed up for this earth Earth School, as it's called by Dolores, is uh, the people that didn't want to be here. They felt like they, they were the first ones. They, they really didn't want to do it, didn't want to be here to help raise the frequency and, you know, shift the DNA. Um, and then the second wave, uh, they like hold the frequency so they don't even have to do anything. Just walking around, they can, they can tune frequencies of other people. Uh, but the problem is, is they don't want to be around people. They like to kind of be on their own. And then the third wave is like the crystal children. And they already have the upgraded DNA. They're already there, um, but they're young. And so that's the third wave. And that apparently there's some like critical mass that's finally been achieved now where there's enough people to help shift the frequency to like transcend into the new earth. She talks about new earth a lot. Have you heard about new earth? Um, a little bit. I, I mean, I don't, do you... So right now she's saying that the frequency has been changed. Yeah. I mean, this is all her talks like from when she was still alive, but that there's enough and that it's shifting, it's happening. The, the transition is, is it's happening. Not that, into I'm, not, I'm not that optimistic about people <laughs> at this point, unfortunately. Maybe that's, I agree. maybe that's sad. I mean, there's a lot to be bummed about. There's a lot to look at and think it's worse than ever, but. On the other side of it, there's potential that it's better than ever. That's true. I mean, I think if you look at the, look at the world now compared to where it was, you know, a hundred years ago, it's like we've come a, a extremely long way. You know, the the, yeah. the way of life and the, your poverty and and health and you know all those things are way up there, but. I don't know. I guess there's just other things we deal with. So um, with all this talk, are you like, is there, is there a sense of spirituality within you? Are you curious about that? Are you, is that, would you call yourself more spiritual than religious? That's kind of like the, usually the deciding factor, yeah. I suppose. You know, I grew up in a church. I grew up, um, you know, God and Jesus and all the, all those things. Um, you know, and, and there's still a, a large part of me that it, it, that is there. Um, but there's another huge part of me that, you know, I kind of went away from that, kind of came back to it and there, but there's a huge part of me that is really curious about, you know, all these other, you know, not just religions, but, you know, aliens, spirituality, you know, the hypnotized re reincarnation, um, that, so I, I guess I would say I'm spiritual, but, you know, my background is in, you know, is in the is in the church so it's hard to say where i land on it i guess does it make you feel like you're blasphemous if you say you're not really religious no 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 did you have any experiences sometimes that's what does it you know there's no. you know you see it you think you see an alien or you have an experience in your sleep or yeah. you know you have a mystical experience sort of a transcendent moment has any of that stuff ever happened to you no i wish i would i think that'd be cool but um i'm not that lucky you know, it, it, there's just so much out there for like, where, where, where I land, where I have a hard time with is like, you know, 
someone says, you know, you've got to believe in X, Y, or Z, period, because it's in the Bible or whatever, wherever, wherever you land on it. Like I have a really hard, hard time with that because, you know, there's however many different religions out there and some of them are make a lot of sense. And there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of smarter people than me um, that know a lot more than me too. So I just don't like it when people are like, you know, it's, it's this way or you're not, or you're not going to heaven. Yeah, I agree. Well, what do you teach your kids then? I mean, I feel like that's the, like, you know, when you have kids, it's one thing to think things on your own and, uh, you know, pontificate on what, you know, what's real and what's not and what matters to you and what doesn't, and it can change. Right. But when you have kids, you're kind of like, what do you teach them? And you feel like there's got to be some level of consistency, I would think. I think there, there, there can be, but I also, you know, I try to, you know, let them kind of navigate the waters a little bit on their own. You know, I, you know, being in the South, you know, you look at some of these families and, you know, they've got a, you know, they've got a three-year-old that is, I mean, already indoctrinated. Like they're, they're fully, oh yeah, you know, in the church, in on God, like, you know, Jesus, all the stuff. And maybe that's the right thing. Maybe it's not. Um, I just don't want to, I just don't want my, my kids to, I'm not going to tell them exactly what to think. I want them to kind of figure some stuff out. And if they come back to that on their own and that's how they figure it out, I think that's better than me telling my five-year-old, all right, this is exactly how it is. Cause I don't know. I don't know if that's a hundred percent true. Mm-hmm. I mean, no one does. I mean, you might believe it, you might have faith. And I think that's, that's the beauty of it, but for me to tell them that, and then you know, twenty five years down the road, they're like, "Hey, Dad, you're you're completely full of shit. That's not it." I mean, they're probably definitely going to say that at some point. Oh about yeah, something. Oh yeah. <laughs> like you know, uh, you know, I, I've talked to them about they, they've. We both have talked to them about you know reincarnation. We've talked to them about them about you know Buddhism. We talked to them about God and Jesus. Like they, they, I like. I want them to be. I guess well round is not the right word, but I just want them to kind of take in some of this knowledge and then figure it out as they go. Well, it's like having options. It's kind of like today, you know, and if you watch the news and you only watch one channel and you that, that like it's a self-fulfilling prophecy of, you know, spin cycle of the same information, you'll never think different. So yeah. having those options means there's, you know, it's you watching every channel and being like, I don't know. Yeah, that kind of resonates. That doesn't. Yeah. And I also don't want them to like, you know, when they get a little bit older of of some kid says, Hey, you know, I believe X, Y, and Z. And then my kids go, no, you're completely wrong. Like I want them to be able to have an open dialogue and be like, all right, well, tell me more about that. You know, I kind of believe this, but I want to hear what this is about. So as far as past lives, do you feel like you have any, or reincarnation, do you feel like you have any thoughts or feelings or intuitive hits on like, man, in a past life, I was definitely a Viking. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Or I was some like Mayan warrior. After I read all those books, I was like, I want to go and get hypnotized and do this, but I don't think I can be hypnotized. I think I'm one of those people. Have you done it? I've never been hypnotized, but I mean, you have to be willing, you know, I, I think you have to be willing to, and when, by, when I say that, it's like, you know, there can be a lot of experiences you have that where you transcend into a different space, but you have to believe it's possible. Oh, yeah. You have to be willing and open. Like you have to believe it's possible, you know, and want to. Yeah. I think you also have to believe that. I think a, a part of you has to believe that you were, you definitely had past lives too. Yeah. I mean, I think that's part of it. I mean, cause if you didn't have a past life and you're like, I'm doing a past life regression and getting hypnotized, you're like, this yeah. is so stupid. Sure. And because your energy matters, your frequency matters. I mean, I've seen, I've seen like, uh, like you know, the, the aura people, they take a picture and then they tell you about all that stuff. Like, and, and I've also been to, I don't, I don't know if there's a mind read. I don't, I don't know what his exact title was, but like, I go into those things like. Who was it? Did you see somebody? You saw somebody for something? Yeah. here in t- I've seen somebody here in town and then there's, I saw somebody in Chicago. Like um, a psychic reader or like an aura like, reader? Both. I've seen, I've seen both. Okay. And, but I go into those things, like, I say nothing, like, I'm not telling you anything, like, I'm not, I'm measuring my words, I'm, I'm being short as possible. Yeah. Because like, there's a part of me is like, all right, this is a gimmick, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them something that, you know, 
they're going to take and it's something that I want to hear and they're going to, they're going to work the system a little bit. So, but I mean, the, the, the two times I've, I've, I've done it, like they've been, they've, I mean, they've nailed it. Do you get sketchy about like how, how early they have to know your name? Cause when oh, I do it, I'm like, oh man, how early do they have to know my name? You know, cause that's yeah. going to throw everything off and it's not like oh. I'm that famous. Right. But yeah. I'm, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of Google searching. No, no, exactly. Like I've, I've given like fake names before. Good one. Why didn't yeah. I think of that? Yeah. Just change your last name. A perpetuating thought I have, which is why I love quantum physics so much is, um, and science is the question of like, what is reality? Do you ever think about that? Tell me more. Are we holographic in nature? Is this a simulation? Are we zeros and ones? Are we, you know, what, what, where did we come from? Are we aliens of some sort? Like, what is the nature of our reality? You know, I mean, one of the things Dolores says that's so crazy is she goes, you know, there's a concept that's hard, but this place that we're at for this talk right now didn't exist until you all came here. She's like, I know that's hard to understand, but. It is hard to understand, um, you know. But then it's also like if you start thinking too much about that stuff, aren't you just missing the the beauty of this life and you're not present and you're not just enjoying it? Or do you or or can you do both? I think that if no I think knowing or or going towards knowing, if I ever got to know, which is probably an unending search until you die and I'm not ready, um, it would I would think there'd be a, a direction how to live your life, right? Like if you realize that this is just like one of a thousand lives and it's just some little increment and you are just trying to learn the one lesson that you left off with in the last life to come back and do the next version. I always think to myself, I don't want to come back and learn this lesson next time. I don't want to have to get to this point to do this yeah. again. I'm going to do it now. And, um, and so things like that, it helps me to figure out how to live my life. Oh, that makes sense. I like that. Have you figured out what that thing is yet? No, of course not. <laughs> it's just a intuitive thoughts. Like as a man, are you tapped into your body? Like that's one thing that I feel like men are a little bit not quite as in tune with. But do you get, are you in, do you feel like you're intuitive? Do you feel like you like know where things sit in your body? Can you feel energy? Um, yeah, probably not as well as, as a woman does. I mean, I, I, I feel like I listen to my gut really well. That's good. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I definitely do that. Um, you know, and just being a professional athlete, like you're, I'm, you're in tune to your body and, and your mind, and like, I, I think that just comes kind of naturally. So, you know, I, I, for myself, like I go with whatever my gut, like you know, my mind. I, I feel like I overthink things a lot. Mm. So I'm like, all right, mm. let's just settle down. Like, what's my, what was my first gut instinct? Where am I at? Let's just do that. Don't don't come up with a million different scenarios of how this could go right or how it could go wrong and play it all out. What's your gut say? Do that. And there must be some stories of both those decisions, the one that you went with your gut and the one that you didn't. Like, because you've proven this to yourself somehow, right? I mean, when I whenever whenever I left Denver, I was like, all right, like what do what do I want to do? You mm. know, there was both sides of it, there was all this stuff. And I was like, all right, my gut, like I can't play here anymore like this is just it's just i gotta go and mm. so and even even when i was done with football then too i was like all right like you know there's other opportunities um you know the kids were getting a little bit older um you know you're getting pressure from you know agents and and friends and other people hey go do this go do that um and you know i just sat with myself and i was like all right you know, my guts, I'm done. Like, I'm just, I'm tapped out here. I'm tired. Like, just hang it up. You're done. So it wasn't hard. It wasn't a hard decision or no, it was, okay. it was, it felt clear at least. Uh, it, it felt clear enough, you know, but I mean, it was over a week or so. So, I mean, it, I mean, it, it was, you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth um, and play it all out. And, but it, at, at the end of the day, like, I think you just have to trust. Most people have to trust themselves. Some people can't trust themselves, but I feel like I can.
Okay. Another thing that you hit on that you said you love, you like to talk to people about is health and I'm super into it. Are you into anything cool or crazy or different? Like I have someone showing up when we're done with these interviews to do my first NAD drip. That's exactly what I was going to say. NAD. That's exactly what I was going to say. You haven't done it. I haven't done it. And the doctor I'm working with does a, like a front load. So I do it. I'm doing five out of 10 days. Okay. So you're doing so, five days bro. I'm going to do like, I think I'm going to do Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to, you know, I want them to be able to get that. I don't want it to get all, you know, my vein and you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's you're, you're going to hate it. Oh, great. You're going to hate it. Well, maybe it just depends. Like just have them go really slow. Yeah. They say you can get nauseous. Oh yeah. Oh, great. Oh. So like it felt like, for me, the first time, like I, I've done, I've done the, uh, I've done five days in a row. Um, and then three, take a day off three days. Uh, I've done my latest was I just did, uh, every Monday for six weeks. Okay. And I'm about to probably in another month, I'll probably go back and do another like three or four day treatment. Um, so I played basketball. I, I was playing basketball, um, with, kind of these older guys at a high school down here and like my left knee's always giving me problems just so it always has just achy and like if, if i jump on it too much like it just hurts like hell and you know sleep anxiety like stress like all those things hmm. after you do nad for a couple of days <laughs> you'll feel like you're 20 years old you'll sleep like a baby huh. like your stress will be down anxiety um it's your appetite, your energy, uh, your recovery, like workouts recovery will be through the roof. Wow. This stuff's incredible. It's incredible. My understanding was it's kind of like, I thought it was about just detoxification. Then it was like, no, it's kind of hormonal kind of balance. Like it balances you out energy, like emotionally. Then it's about, you know, um, you know, not getting so much anxiety and stress. Like he, you know, doctor even said like colors get brighter. He's like, honestly, the world kind of brightens up. So it's almost like a cellular boost. It's just like, almost like you become like, you go from human to superhuman. Yeah. Well, I mean, NAD is in every cell in your body. So it's in the right. mitochondria. So it charges up every cell. So as you get older, I mean, think about whenever you're a kid, like you could, you could run around for hours on end and like, mm. you're fine. like my kids don't stop. Mm. So, you know, you just boost up all those cells again and it's, it's, it's incredible stuff. So have you tried anything else? Like, I think there's curcumin, there's like all kinds of other things. Have you tried any other drips? Uh, I've, no, I mean, I've done all like the big drips, but like the N I, NAD one is, I don't know how you could beat it. Honestly, I did a podcast with, um, Dan Carcillo, hockey player for uh, the Blackhawks. Uh huh. And he's, um, he's microdosing mushroom, making a company out of that. And I haven't, really? yeah. And then my doctor here who does the NAD, um, he was saying that some of his, you know, elite patients that are out there killing it, microdose LSD, which is scarier to me than mushrooms. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, well, that's a synthetic. Yeah, exactly. So it's a little, ner a little bit different when it's a synthetic, but the world of medicine is changing rapidly, but you know, LSD, I think LSD was developed as a, like a truth serum drug way back in like the sixties or something like that. Yeah. I think they were using it to, yeah, like you said, like they capture people and they just give them LSD. Isn't like, that like M MDMA? Is that kind of all the same stuff? MDMA? Similar? No, it's a little different. That's Molly. I think that just makes you happy. That's ecstasy. I've never had that, but sure it's great you're probably not going to go ahead and divulge all of the things that you've tried and i don't blame you <laughs> i honestly have never had ecstasy that's fascinating i mean i think you should try that stuff you're retired now you can try whatever you want i mean i think like you said the world of world of medicine and health and drugs is is rapidly changing and i think uh we're learning a lot more than we ever have before well what's next what's next on the try it list for you other than microdosing psilocybin yeah, I think it's, I think that's what's up next. In, in, in AD and that, do more of that. Maybe you should just go for the hero's dose of psilocybin first. <sighs> he, we were talking about that and he was like, because I mean, they're walking, they're walking people through this. Like they'll set up a room. Set and setting. 
gets you all geared up and stuff. Yeah. And, and he's like, listen, he goes, the first couple hours might be the worst experience of your life. And I'm like, really? He's like, well, you have to go into it with a purpose. You got to have, you know, this is what I want to accomplish. And he said, like, the first hour or so, he said, it could be, could be absolute hell. He goes, but then you get, you get out of it. And he goes, you know, you, you mentally, you'll have a breakthrough and, you know, you'll see things completely different. I mean, Rogan talks about it all the time. I think oh, he does. Yeah. This guy's probably into ayahuasca then too, if he's doing ceremony stuff like that. I mean, sure. Do you know what that is? Um, yes, I've never done it though. Yeah. Like, There's so many things like out a, there. You, you like a shaman to walk you through that stuff. You do. But that's what he's talking about is like yeah. walking you through it, like creating the room, creating the space. Yeah you know, giving you, giving you a safe space so that you can let go. Right. Like I said, if you want to get into that, you know, if you want to get hypnotized, you got to yeah. be able to let go. Like you got to feel safe. You got to be open I mean, to it. Do you still work out a bunch? Uh, not as much as I used to. No, more, you know, more just kind of stretching, keeping things together, like gaining, gaining muscle is not my goal anymore by any means. Speaking of knees, have you tried walking backwards in that whole new craze? No, I haven't heard of this. Oh, you should definitely look that up. There's, I can't remember the doctor, but I just went and did this. And uh, uh, Gabby Reese, you know, uh, the volleyball player, her and Laird, they're super into fitness and health and all things. And um, she took me to the beach and we went, uh, we went walking backwards for a couple of miles. But it's supposed to be incredible for your knees. Well, it makes sense because you're going in one direction your entire life. Yeah. You're just, you know, you're just wearing those muscles out. So it makes, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I'm into it, I guess. Are you, you do the, uh, like the Wim Hof stuff, cold tubs and everything? My morning routine is I wake up, I red light. Infrared. Infrared. Yeah. I, uh, dry brush. Okay. I take a cold shower and then I drink coffee. <laughs> That's that's generally my morning. There's that's a workout in there. That's a good coffee one. enemas. I don't know if you ever tried that. Uh, I haven't tried. I've ever heard of them though. Yeah, there's that. Take whatever magical pills. Oh, I take peptides. Okay. You take peptides? Yeah. What about uh, like ozone? I've heard about that. Have you done yeah. it? That's also enema form. Yeah. Uh huh. That's what I heard. I don't think I've done it enough to get the full benefits because it's just you're sticking a tube of o ozone. Up your butt. I mean, I don't know. It's just it's maybe maybe it's too much for me. It's probably too much for you to talk about because you're a dude. And anytime a dude talks about getting something stuck up their butt, it's really uncomfortable. That's, ve that's very true. Wait, I got to ask you yep. about the Chicago days. And that one time when you were on the sideline, looking really sad and pouty in your big jacket, yeah. did you feel like you caught a lot of flack for that? Well, they should have stuffed me in the locker room. That's what should have happened. I shouldn't even have been out there. And I did catch a lot for that. And like no one really protected me, so it is what it is. And that's that. That was the difference in Chicago and like Denver. Like Denver, Mike Shanahan was there, and like everything went through Mike. Like he owned the narrative in Chicago. You know they're competing papers there's you know, there's a lot going on so i feel like your personality is kind of just easy going cool do you feel like that's why sometimes maybe it kind of got going because you didn't there was no, you didn't say i don't know i don't remember you saying anything or oh, i didn't i just i mean i, I went through you know, i went through uh exit exit uh physical on what was the game was sunday maybe monday and then i left town i was gone i never said anything for like two or three months I wasn't gonna fight. I wasn't gonna fight him. Like I, it was, it was, was what it was. Um, What's know. the misunderstanding about Jay's personality that you think people don't know? Because I don't. I mean, look, I only knew you as a football player. I, yeah. you know, heard opinions of people that you know that are like, "No, Jay's cool. He's a really great guy. He's super, yeah. super great guy." I mean, I think in Chicago we got we got the. Uh, you know, we lost games early on. Um, and then, like, I got in trouble for, you know, yelling at teammates and, and being a little bit more fiery. And then I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to not do anything. And then I got in trouble. Mm -hmm. for, and I got in trouble for doing that. And then it was like, you know what? 
I'm just going to go out here and play football and just do my job, not say shit and say as few words as possible, do my job, try to win games. This conception was like, I didn't care. And, you know, I was just out there. But, it I mean, was. I, yeah. Exactly. And that was, that was the farthest thing from the truth. Like, you know, I was working, I was doing everything under the sun to try to win these football games, you know, playing her, doing everything fighting with coaches in the in the in the in the meetings like you know trying to improve, improve the game plan you know trying to get good players in there um so I, mean, I think that was the biggest misconception that kind of pissed me off but but i also like my personality is i'm not going to go out there and you know defend myself to the media over and over and over again i was just like all, all right it is what it is i'm just going to continue as long as my teammates were cool with me and like i was good in the locker room i was like all right that's the rest of it doesn't matter I actually think that the reality show did a good job of showing like funny side of you and for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Productive. I don't know how it was to do a reality show. I, I think that would be misery to me, but maybe it was fun. It wasn't bad. It wasn't as bad as you think it is. Um, you know, it's more scripted than anything. I mean, I, when I say scripted, like they would go, Hey, here's our scene. We need this. Mm. You guys go and figure it out. Or, you know, or this is the goal of, of, of this scene, you know, this is what we're talking about, go. Um, and then you kind of say what you want to say. So it really kind of depends on who you're, if you're working with somebody that's pretty good and, and is on it, it, yeah. it is pretty, it's pretty seamless. So would you do another one then? <sighs> depends on what it was about. I mean, I wouldn't say no by any means. Um, well, it's about your life, dude. That's what they're always about. Hunting, your podcast, you're hanging out uh, with was- Trump. I would do that. In a, yeah, I'd do that in a heartbeat. You know, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't do stuff out of my house um, like it was before. And I, I don't, I definitely wouldn't do a, like an intimate relationship again. I can't. Um, so I, I wouldn't do that. But I mean, if I was having fun doing stuff about my life, hunting, all the other stuff that happens, podcasts, the beer, I, I'd be in on that in a heartbeat. There you go. You just called it in. All right. Oh. Who's going to the Super Bowl? Uh, KC and the Rams. That'll be a good game. That would be, be really, a fun. That would be a fun outcome. Be a really good game. The Rams. I think the Rams. The Rams. They 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 have a test though. The 49ers, That defense is good. They're going to run the ball. Um, they're going to do all the all those things. KC. They. I don't think they can be stopped right now. They're on fire. They're rolling. Who do you got? Yeah, I think that's a good bet. Okay. I think that was a good game. I mean, as far as far as Kansas City, like to come off of that game, that's a boatload of momentum. Oh, that's a lot of energy. That's a lot of pep in your step. Yeah, they don't feel like they can be stopped. And I think that, you know, I think that not, you know, I, I think rolling right into the next one will really help too. I always think bye weeks are a drag. I don't know why. I always feel like it breaks the momentum. Bye weeks suck. I hate bye weeks. It's just if you're if you're doing well, if you if you're if you're towards rock bottom, it's like oh, I can't wait for the bye week. Get me there. Right. All right. Cool. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the Pretty Intense podcast today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you heard today and you want to hear more, please click on the subscribe button.